Are you flustered by the changes they've made to the Microsoft certifications? I'm Mike Roderick from IT Pro TV, and in this episode of How to Get Started in IT, we're going to cover those changes and see if we can't clear it up for you. All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is the changes they've made to the certification process, or the, I don't know if you want to call it the categories. Microsoft has always been about product-based certifications. You got certified in Server 2012, or you got certified in Server 2016, or Windows 7, or Windows 8, if anybody took those exams. That's no longer the case. Microsoft has switched over to a role-based certification process. That means rather than getting certified on a particular technology, we're getting certified on a job role, really independent of the underlying technology. And this is a really good thing, right? I know a lot of people are confused about it and, and a lot of people are used to getting your MCSA in 2012 and your MCSA in 2016 and you're wondering where that MCSA is in 2019. But the way things are nowadays with, with operating systems as a service, the way we're rolling out updates and changes to our operating systems, the underlying operating system is no longer as important as the, the processes, right? The technology that you're using to complete your job. So rather than getting certified in a particular version of server, you're getting certified in, say, Azure Active Directory. It doesn't really matter what the underlying operating system is going to be. So that's the first big hurdle people are going to have, is to have to get away from the mentality of, I'm going to get certified in a particular version of an operating system or a particular version of a product. That's no longer the case. You're going to get certified in what it is that you want to do. And this is really advantageous for you as well as the employers because they know what they need. I need somebody that can handle Office 365. Right? So you can get certified in Microsoft, uh, say Office 365, Microsoft Office 365. Now you can prove to that employer that you know that technology because that's what they're implementing. They're not implementing it based on the underlying technology. You get certified in Azure Active Directory. Again, really doesn't matter what's going on underneath. So get past that, get over the whole, I need to get certified in a particular version of a product. You're gonna get certified in what it is you plan to do in the field. The next thing we want to talk about is the naming conventions because those have changed as well. We used to have exams called MTAs or Microsoft Technology Associates. These were our entry level type exams. Those are still there, but we now have some called fundamentals. So you'll see like AZ900 is Azure Fundamentals or uh, MS900, which is your uh, Office 365 Fundamentals, right? These are meant to be entry level exams. If you're new to IT, or if you want to see if you want to move into a particular area, these are great exams to start with because they're going to, first of all, not assume any knowledge. They're going to be ground level, bottom floor type exams, testing you on basic knowledge. So it gives you a chance to kind of get your feet wet. And I'm going to take that AZ900 exam and see what Azure is all about. And if I like it, maybe I move on into AZ-103 or 104, as it's going to be called uh, coming up shortly. So it, those are like entry-level exams, just like the old MTAs were. Now, most of those fundamental exams are not going to get you anything as far as moving on to the next level. You'll get your Azure uh, fundamental certificate, but that doesn't count towards, say, the AZ-104 or anything like that. They're meant to just be standalone baseline knowledge. And even if you're not in IT, these can be really good exams for you. You know, if you have to support an IT department, it's important that you understand the terminology and the technologies that your IT department is using. So when they come to you and they say, we need this particular resource, or we need this particular subscription level, or this particular support level in Azure, you'll know what they're talking about and you can make an intelligent decision. So those exams are, again, geared towards entry-level IT personnel or people that work with IT and just need that foundational knowledge. The next level of exams are, is the what we used to call the Microsoft Certified System Administrator or MCSA for short. Those were the technology-based. So you got your MCSA in Server 2012 or your MCSA in Server 2016. Those are now called associate roles. So these are going to be your just above those entry level where we're proving that we understand a technology and I can now get a job in that field. I can go to an employer and I can show them that, hey, I've got me my AZ-104, I've got my associate certification, I know this technology, I can work with this technology uh, and it would be good to hire me kind of thing, right? 
Then we can move into the next level, which used to be called the MCSE or MCSD. So if you still hold any of those certifications uh, and you're looking to update those into more current certifications, you would be looking at expert role certification types. So these are the next level up. These are the ones that go beyond the associate. Again, they're called expert. So again, you're gonna have to prove more detailed knowledge. These exams are gonna be much harder. Right? because you're gonna to have to go above and beyond the basic skills to work with if within that particular role. All right, so to recap, with these new exams and this role-based certification, we've got the fundamental exams, which are gonna be considered entry-level, no experience really required, and this is gonna help develop your skills really geared towards a broad audience. Again, let you test those waters, see if that's something that you're interested in pursuing. Right? When we get into the associate and the expert level certifications, this is gonna require technical knowledge. You're gonna to need to understand the technology, be able to implement it, design it, manage it, depending on if you're going for the associate or the expert. So these exams, the associate and the expert, are, are really for somebody that's interested in or transitioning to a particular job role. All right, so the last thing I wanna talk about is the exams that are available within these role-based certifications. We talk about the fundamental exams. We have two to pick from currently. There's the Azure Fundamentals, and then there's the Microsoft 365 Fundamentals. So pick the one that you're interested in or think you might be interested in starting. Once we move up to the associate and the expert level roles, we have things like administrator or AI engineer. We have data scientist, developer, security engineer, DevOps engineer, or solutions architect. These are all different roles that you might currently be in or be interested in transitioning to, and there are certifications available for those roles. And they're adding more all the time, so make sure you go back to Microsoft's page, you know, take a look at Microsoft certifications, and see what roles are available and start there. All right, so hopefully that helps clear up some of the confusion around this new role-based certification model that Microsoft is deploying. If you have any insights you'd like to add, make sure you put them in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Mike Roderick, and this has been another episode of How to Get Started in IT.